various organizations in both SQL Server and how to deliver how to deliver presentations, both technical and not technical, in a proper way. However, I want to do presentations and whenever I'm delivering a presentation, I'm always focused in delivering this presentation in the best possible way, which means that I'm not doing it or I'm trying and I'm trying to learn the people to make their audience not look like this. Because I know that if I'm going to ask you now how many of you were on a boring presentation and if we were in a room now, I am a hundred percent sure that the whole room will raise their hand. So I know that you have been there, but now in this presentation and in this webinar, our question is how we can make a great presentation. And based on that, one of the components of a great presentation, what you need to do is design. Want it or not, design matters. Design matter in design matters in every single thing. If design didn't matter, there was no there was not going to be Apple, there was not going to be Lamborghini, there was not going to be Nike, there was not going to be Ferrari, etc. etc. So design matters in every single thing, and so it matters for our presentations. Yes, I would agree that. Content is also important. Probably many people say content is the only important thing, but I would not agree with this. Content is important, but also how you present that content, how you deliver it, even in the, in the visual manner of the things, even with your slide deck, really makes a difference. And I can tell you because I, I know that, I have, del I have done that, and I have seen the reaction of the audience. Design really matters for our presentations, no matter the fact that we're technical people. So what we are going to do today is we're going to go through 10 things that will make you probably rethink or at least reconsider how you are looking at presentation design and how you think about design in general. Because again, my goal here today is to make you or at least give you an ideas that will help you not do something like this to your audience. That's my final goal. I want to give you 10 steps, 10 things for you to consider and think about, which if you apply to your presentations, you will be stunned. You will be completely stunned what's going to be what's going to happen and what the result will be so let's fire this up with number one the first thing that I would definitely recommend you do the first thing that I'm seeing very very frequently in terms of a mistake is whenever someone knows that he or she has to deliver a presentation the first thing that they are doing is they grab their laptop or nowadays they grab their Surface Pro 3s or Surface tablets or iPads or what have you and the first thing that they are doing is they are opening PowerPoint. That's the first thing and what happens is this. We start to think and we start to play with PowerPoint. However, PowerPoint is just a tool. PowerPoint may not exist tomorrow. Remember that PowerPoint is just a software that allows us to do a presentation. It's not the presentation itself. And what I, why I'm saying this is that is because a presentation should be a story. And my recommendation to you, I know that for some of you that may sound like a bit crazy, who is doing that? My recommendation, my idea, my like, just promise me, just promise me, try doing your presentation, try sketching your presentation first on some type of paper. Grab a list, grab some sticky notes, and try to, try to just throw in ideas on that, on that piece of paper. Try to write everything that comes to your mind, words, pictures, 
once you do that, once you put all of the content that you want to present on a white piece of paper right in front of you, take a look at it carefully and try to figure out which should come after the what what should come uh, after after the previous the previous thing meaning what's the order of your thoughts how should a presentation be structured what are you going to tell first what are you going to tell second put the numbers on on the list or where, wherever you actually took that notes and then try to figure out or try to at least think about what is the best way for you to actually present the ideas, the thoughts, what you want to present on that slide with images or with some other types of some probably audio, some other types of media. Don't rush into PowerPoint. I have seen that many, many times and I can tell you that that just limits what you want to deliver and what you actually can deliver. Just promise me, I know that it may sound some uh, in a way ridiculous or strange, but promise me that you are going to try to first go on paper, do all the sketches there, write down, cross out, reorder, figure out or at least think about what pictures, what media should I use for every single idea, every single slide, and then and only then go to your Mac, go to your Surface, open the tool that you use, be that PowerPoint, be that Keynote, be that Prezi, I don't care. Then and only then, once you have the whole concept, the whole idea, the whole logic, if you want, in front of you, then do it on, then do it in the tool itself. I promise you, you will be, you will be, see, you will be shocked by what you are going to see. Now that's the first thing, that's the first mistake that I'm seeing very, very frequently, even with people like me. So go analog first. Now the second thing that's really important that, that we as SQL Server or as IT professionals are doing is that we are not trying to figure out how we can make the things very, very simple. However, as presenters, it is our duty, it is our, it should be our goal to make sure that our slide deck is as simple as possible for our audience. And you, we will talk more about simplicity after a moment, but before that we have to talk about restraint. And what restraint means in, and why restraint is so connected to simplicity is because the principle, if you want, the principle of restraint means avoid everything that is not adding value on your slide. I mean, absolutely everything. Don't put a picture on your slide if it's just for the sake of putting a picture there. Don't put any text on the slide if that's not adding some type of value. Keep it, keep it as clean as possible. What this means is that if you see an example, here you will see from now on some of my example slides that I have used in conferences, across my teams, what have you, is that these are examples from real world presentations. This is for example, an, this, take a look at how this works, uh, how this sounds. This is an example of an example. So this is an example of an example of a, of a slide from my presentation for our for my teammates on what business intelligence is and why we should care about business intelligence so if you take a look at there is almost nothing else but the important thing on the slide if you think about it though i could have easily put some pictures next to for example the next to, for example, to this blue box, right? Because I have probably heard that pictures are good. However, it doesn't make sense. Avoid any quarter, avoid anything that is not adding value, that is not helping your audience to grab, to, to just take the idea from the slide as easy as possible. 
just keep it as, as clean as clean as possible. Another example. Here is another example from a slide that I delivered. And many, many people say, oh yeah, but that's not possible. I, I don't think that delivering a technical presentation is not possible in a simple way or with such a nice slides. I would really argue about that because I have seen not not I'm not speaking about myself I have seen so many okay it's there are not so many but I have seen at least 10 people in our SQL Server community that speak and when you see them speaking their slides are incredible they are just incredible and if you go to Pluralsight I have actually recorded a course on this for Pluralsight and you if you have a registration for those for that site you will see examples of other people from our community and how they approach and how they actually apply the principle of a restraint. And you will see that even a 500 level topic can be delivered with beautiful slides. I'm not kidding. I know, however, that delivering a 500 level topic is hard and I know that for sure and even what's even harder is delivering it in a beautiful way, in a simplistic way, in terms of when we talk about presentation design. Many people, guys, many people, many people, including me in the past, were delivering presentation, presentations in the wrong way, and I'll show you what wrong way means after a moment, because delivering the slides, creating the slides in the fashion that you know only text everywhere is just simpler. Right? right? It, it just doesn't take that much time. However, is that the correct thing for your audience? I really, really doubt that. It just takes time to make a beautiful slide. One more example for how to apply the principle of restraint. Take a look at, take a look at this. This is from a recent presentation of me in Germany. Why would I do something else here? Why would I for example, I can remove this picture and I can put the code here, but I can actually not place a picture. I can write, for example, where should one go to enable this option, what this option is actually doing, and many, many more. I can do, I, and I can write so much on the slide that actually the slide will not be enough for me, right? But that's not how I think about it. I'm thinking about how to transfer how to deliver the information to my audience in the most simplistic way and this is one of the ways how I'm going to do it because remember slides are there to support you slides are not there to repeat you and that's com that's very very different so that's about restraint please make sure that anything that's not needed, anything that you think it's, is like just something that should be there on the slide just because you think should, it should be there, rethink that. Think about whether or not that's the most clean way of delivering that content and go with this one. I promise you that you will never regret doing. Your audience will be grateful. The third thing. Talking about restraint, the restraint leads to simplicity. Every single time I see, again, as presenters, as speakers, you may probably be a trainer, every single time you deliver content for your audience, you and it's you and it will be your fault if the people don't understand what you are talking about. Many people say that presentation design is not important because, again, it just takes time. It really, it really takes time to do something, something special, something that, that the audience will love and something that they will enjoy. But when we talk about simplicity, it's our, that is our, that's something that we should do. It's not the audience. It's not the organizers. We are responsible for delivering our content in the most simplistic way possible. And that's both true for the demos, it's also true for how we 
talk, and it's also true uh, true for the slide deck that we are using. So if you take a look at an example again from my slide, here is an agenda slide, right? So that's that's quite again restrained. Nothing that should be, for example, easily I can put a let's say some type of image behind this graph, right? Easily. I can actually use an HD image also because I have heard on the web that it's cool to use images and I can place an HD image in in the background. Will they, however, will this help me? Will this be of help to my audience too? Because I'm not sure. Again, the principle of restraint and the 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 simple Felicity in how we approach things, how we approach things is very, very important. Be extremely cautious of how you deliver your content. I know that just writing it down on the slide is easy, but again, I will, I want to stress that out because it's really important. The fact that it's easy, it doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do. And that's one example of a simplistic slide. In this slide, I'm saying to the audience, guys, here is how this presentation will go. We will talk about six things, which are, in this case, which are the six important performance improvements in SQL Server. And we will, the presentation is the, on the axis we are here in terms of the time of the presentation. And here, here is how this will go. The first thing that we're going to talk about is a huge improvement. Then we're going to talk about a small improvement. Then we're going to again go and talk about huge improvement, small, huge, etc. Nothing special, nothing that people cannot understand in a, like a second. And again, the principle of restraint, nothing additional, nothing that's not used, nothing that doesn't add value is on this slide just as simple as possible. Here is another slide and I really love to show this one because this slide can give me so much freedom to make the most ugly slide on the planet you cannot even imagine. Here I can talk and I talk about what is the locking hierarchy inside SQL Server and inside these databases. And if you think about it, what I can easily do is I can just drop and remove everything from this slide. I can drop this graphic. What I can do after that is I'll put a text field on this slide and I'll start writing. Locking hierarchy can be on four levels and then I'll put bullet points on the database level, on table level, on page level and on row level. Then I will write, let's say, two or three sentences per bullet point and my slide will be complete, right? It will be great. However, that's not, again, the slides should not repeat ourselves. The slides are there to help you, to support you, and to, and to add additional understanding for your audience, additional value for your audience. Give them the most simple way to grab your idea, to understand the content. Again, and if you think about this, if you think about how this slide was built, you will probably figure out that coming up with an idea and with an, let's call it as we like to call it, with an implementation, like, on, like what you are seeing here, is not that simple. However, I can assure you that your audience and my audience really appreciate slides like this because they make a hard concept look really easy, right? Really, really easy. So that's how you make simple slides. That's how a simple slide should, make, should look, and it should not look like this. This is a slide that I am using every single time to show what a simple slide is not. This is me on the Twitter, on Twitter actually, but it was years, years ago. However, as you can see, this is, what, this is my reaction three or four years ago when I saw a slide, a slide like this in a webinar. If you, if, you, if you really look at this slide, it's about database mirroring. And if you really look at this slide again, you'll probably see 
that this slide is actually a copy paste from MSDN, right? Easy, right? One minute, I just log in to my computer, I type msdn.com database mirroring and I Google that or Bing that, I grab the content, copy paste it on my slide, my slide is ready. Perfect. I have slides. I'm ready to present. However, am I, as a person who was listening to this presentation and to this webinar, understanding what the speaker is talking about? I'm not sure. Even worse, people nowadays, there are people like me who are getting really angry when they see slides like this. And the last thing that you want as a presenter or a speaker or as more or less a public figure, you don't want anyone to place or to write a tweet or comment like this and share it on the web. Because you know that everything nowadays goes viral, someone else will retweet, retweet that and everyone will see that we are doing crappy job in delivering our content. So please, please spend the needed time, think about what is the most simplistic way of delivering your content, write it on some white piece of paper, think again, what is the most efficient way for me to describe that idea? Probably that may be video, probably that may be audio, uh, probably that may be a GIF file because you know DBA reactions nowadays is exploding, sites like this are exploding, probably something else, I don't know but for sure is not this one. And many people say, yeah, but what if I wanna, what if I want to give those slides away for my audience and I want them to read those slides later on? I would say that, that slides are, the sli PowerPoint itself is not the tool that you have to use to just copy paste text. PowerPoint is a presentation software. I know that the whole industry, the enterprise world, because I have been working in enterprise since many years, I know that they are using PowerPoint for every single thing. However, is that right? I doubt that. So the fact that 99% of the people are using PowerPoint or Prezi or Keynote for almost every single thing they, they are doing, it doesn't really mean that that's correct. It doesn't really mean that that's the way to go. So my idea for you is don't go with what 99% of the people are saying just because they are saying that. They may not be correct. That being said, that being said simplicity and restraint go analog first. Three principles till now. My next one is because we are talking about images, when we talk about images, probably you have seen many, many people speaking about images on the web. Yes, you should place and yes, you should have images on your presentation. Absolutely. I agree. I agree, by the way. And that's absolutely true. However, there are some things that we need to consider when we talk about images. And the first thing that we need to consider is what types of images are we using in terms of their quality, right? Because if you think about it, nowadays everything is in very high resolution, everything is just looking stunningly, so whenever you go and present and when, when your audience comes to your presentation, your audience just expects to see great, great photos, great content, in a great quality, just stunning quality. They just expect that. They expect that because they have seen other presenters doing that. So they expect the next one to also do that. So saying that means that we have to care about what quality of our images we are using and that also automatically means that our favorite in the previous 10 years clip art photos are out of the game. So Please bear in mind that when you are going to use images, you just have to go with ones that are high resolution. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. High resolution photos for your presentations. If we have, and I believe we will have, if we have enough time, at the end, 
I will copy paste or I will ask Neil to copy paste all of the sites that I use to download and to find images with high resolution, many of them are free. Many of them, again, many of them are free. So it's just the effort, it's just the time that we need to put to find those images. So many people say, oh, but I cannot find those high quality images or, oh yes, I found that image, but it's, I have to pay for it. Yes, sometimes indeed you have to pay for it and it's well worth to pay for the image. However, in 90% of the cases, I promise you, by the sites that I'm going to provide you now or later in the presentation or via email, you will find, you will find in 90% of the cases, you will find the best picture for your case with an extremely high resolution. So there is no excuse anymore that we cannot find pictures. Now, the second thing is how we actually use those photos because many people can say, yeah, I'm going to use, uh, let's say, high quality image, but I'll put it like this, right? I can put the image like this. I'll not use a full, full slide, meaning the, the whole background will be in the image. I'll use a high quality image, but in this way, and again, it really depends on how you are going and what you are going to deliver in terms of content. And remember, presentations and, and design, design especially, design is something very subjective. Because I like Porsches, you like Ferraris. I like blue, you like yellow. So it's very, very it's, it's more or less art, right? It's more or less art. And because it's art, many people have different opinions on what's beautiful and what's not. I'm just giving you the overall fundamentals that you have to know in order to deliver great, great content and great slide decks. Back on the image, what is the best way for you to, to use image? I don't know if that's, if that's the one, but probably, probably if you think about and if you are in the same scenario as me, I believe this is a better one, right? I think it's better because it just, it just on a psychological level, if you want, it just looks better. It's so clear, it's so nice, it's, it's the, at least in my opinion, it's the best way to deliver, to deliver that content to you. Now, that may be okay in some cases, that may be the only way you can deliver your image. However, that's not right. That's completely not right. Because stretching an image, because many, many times, uh, based on what I just saw, uh, based on, sorry, based on what I just told you about, yeah, we cannot find those high quality images. Many people and many presenters I saw recently, they find some image because they heard that images are cool and you have to have them etc. Many people find images and what they do is because they are finding them with low resolution, they are starting to do things like this. And they stretch the image and now the image doesn't even look right. It looks very strange. This very is, let's say, very, very, mm, how can it, not natural. So whenever I see that, I'll say that the, that's quite not well looking. And again, when we're talking about design, we talk about how we can make everything look in the best possible way. Stretching a low resolution photo because we want to fit it on our slide is not the approach that I, I will definitely support and recommend you. Another approach is this, I have seen this many, many times, putting an image on the, in the center of the in the center of the slide and placing the text, let's say, on some type of angle. Again, if you are going to deliver, if you want to deliver just this keyword, images, for your audience and you want this to be the supportive slide in which you start talking and describing why images are important for your, for your presentation, etc., that may be okay, but again, this is quite, quite better, quite, quite better. And because I'm, because I'm saying you that 
many times many times we are we are hard we are finding it hard to find the proper image every single time you download a photo please bear in mind something every single photo that you download may be may be need, may, you may need to license it somehow even if it's free I will recommend you if you are googling your images and downloading them from the images portion, images tab of Google or Bing, go to the original website where this photo is actually placed and take a look somewhere around the photo whether or not there is this logo, Creative Commons, because that's a standard that defines how you can use that image. And many, many times you will see, you will see that the, out, the author of that image doesn't require you to do almost anything. I mean, most of the images on the web are absolutely free to use. However, many times, also many times, you may see, you may see that images are protected with this Creative Commons license, and this Creative Commons license says, okay, you can use my image, download it for free, you can use it for free, however, when you put it on the slide, I want you to license it in the following way. I want you to put, for example, a link to where you actually got that image from. Or the other way of licensing is, for example, put the name of the author of that image, and that's more than enough, right? It's again free, but you are giving some type of credit to the author, and I'm saying that I really say that because that's important and it's really important because you don't want to be in a situation in which you present something with photos that you didn't license correctly because that may lead to some serious consequences for you. Serious consequences and I'm talking about money and I'm talking about um, even though even even scenarios where someone can go to the court and say uh, they they didn't they didn't uh, they didn't use the the licensing and they didn't license my photo i'm not happy with that etc cetera, etc cetera. you may have probably seen people using images on which there is a watermark that's that's completely wrong because and in their next presentation the author of that image will come in by by a coincidence and if they see that, if you see someone presenting with a watermarked image, that's absolutely illegal. That's illegal. It's absolutely the same with images that are actually free, but you have to license it, license them in the way how the author says. It's illegal. So please take that in mind, bear that in mind, and please make sure that you put, you put the author's name or the link to the image from where you took that image just to be on the safe side just to be on the safe side now that's about the images so the next thing that's quite important are fonts right because many times uh, even people like me <laughs> will probably you may probably think oh okay this guy is like saying everything and he's like pushing the idea to just use images and he doesn't accept slides which are only text and that, that have text, etc. That's not true. I quite understand that there, there is no way, almost no way to deliver a technical presentation without actually writing something on the slide, without actually having some, some keywords or a sentence or let's say a quote from someone. But when we talk about fonts, I want to stress and I want to take a look and share with you from design perspective what are ones what are some of the most beautiful fonts out there and if you take a look at those these are some of the most recognized some of them are some of those fonts are actually not free meaning that you cannot use them without paying for them but more or less these are if you if you speak in if you go to those communities and if you talk with researchers Many, many researches has, have been done. 
many people say and experts in that area said that those, let's say, how many are they? Nine fonts are one of the best looking fonts out there. So I will definitely, I will definitely look at those as something that I may use for my presentation. And interestingly enough, for this presentation and for most of the slides, I'm using Helvetica. The, the slide that's the almost at the bottom. And what else is important about, about fonts is that the fact that we have two types of fonts, right? We, there, there is some type of categorization you may have heard that we have two types of fonts. The first type of font is called sans serif. And these sans serif fonts are the fonts that if you, if you look at the, the characters, if you look at the, the, um, the font itself, you will see that at the end of every single character, there are no additional like, like how, can, how can we say that? There are no like additional things and circles and angles. Comparing it to this one, you'll see that the fonts are looking more or less like you have written them on a machine from 60 years ago. However, sans serif fonts are the way to go, at least in my opinion, are the way to go for presentations which are going to be displayed with a projector. Because many, many times those projectors are actually not using very high resolution. And when you don't have high resolution projector, those small details at the end of every character cannot be seen that much and make people feel feel not that comfortable. It's not that easy for them to read what you have written. However, if you if you are about to give away something that's like long text that people need to read, then I would definitely recommend you go with the other types of fonts which are called serif fonts, which have again which have those additional things at the end of every single character because those type of fonts are actually improving the readability of the text. So again, it's not something that's crucial. It's not something like, oh my God, if I don't do that, my presentation will fail bad. But it's, it's, a, it's an improvement that makes, makes difference. It really does. One more thing about fonts. Every single time when you're using fonts, except for some more, let's say, advanced scenarios or for people that are feeling more comfortable in presenting. And I believe Katrin, who is from Oslo, promised to join the webinar. I, I don't know if she's on, online now, but Katrin, uh, I'll put a link to her blog and to her presentations after that. You will see, for example, her combining multiple fonts, but when she is combining multiple fonts, it's a success. However, the basics are this. Whenever you work with fonts, on one slide, if, you, if, if the scenario is not, let's say, a more interesting scenario, and we can talk, this, we can talk about this in the Q&A section, if that's not the case, every single time, please use fonts that are, for, that are from the same family. What this means is that you may, when you open PowerPoint or when you open Word, you see that Futura, for example, or some other font has, for example, bold, has, let's say, italic, has double bold, and etc. So every single time when you are going to put some text on the slide, every single time the rule of thumb is don't switch and don't use many different fonts on the same slide. It doesn't look consistent, and it, in general, it doesn't look well, because if you take a look at if you take a look at how it looks, it's kind of, again, it's okay, but comparing it to this one, this thing looks quite more consistent in my view. And again, our goal is to deliver our presentation and our slide deck, including the slide deck, in the most simplistic way. That's the final goal. Keep it absolutely simple. Enough about fonts. Now, a bit more about charts and bars and objects like this. Because many times, as database professionals or as IT 
IT specialists. We put some Excel spreadsheets which we visualize in some way. Now, I'm absolutely okay with that. My problem is that Excel and PowerPoint and all of those tools by default are doing that job in not the best way possible. What I mean is that if you take a look at an example slide like this, you will see, and if you try to do this slide in PowerPoint, the first behavior of PowerPoint will be to actually place an, a, a legend on the right. It will place some, let's say some, I'm sorry, I, it will place some, let's say, grit in the background. It will place so many unneeded things. And going back to what we learned already, keep it simple, restrain, remove everything that's not needed. The focus on this slide should be which customer, for example, is taking more, or more of our work. Obviously, we have four customers and one of them is using 50% of our time. The incidents that this customer is generating for our service and for our company are actually 50% of the work that we do. So that's the message. Focus on the message. Don't focus on how many, uh, don't focus and don't repeat, for example, don't place a legend when you don't need it. Just put the information inside the, inside the pie chart, it will be fine. Remove and everything, remove everything from the slide. Keep it absolutely simple. Now, when we talk about pie charts, uh, many, many times the default behavior of us is to use pie charts for almost everything, right? However, pie charts are not the best thing for us to use for every single occasion. Pie charts are okay if we want to show, let's say, the percentage of the whole, from the whole. And in scenarios like this, pie charts can be good. However, if you talk with scientists and if you talk with, with people from the psychology world, let's call them this way, they will tell you that there are some people that do not accept and are not feeling comfortable and actually cannot grasp and don't understand the percentages, meaning the way how they are displayed in that circle way, very, very, very easy, meaning that even if you show them, if, uh, if I hide, for example, the percents, but I don't place 50% 50 uh, 50, 50 for customer A, but let's say I put it 60, and if I ask the audience in my, in my presentation, how many percent, how many percent is every one of those customer, customers actually um, taking, there will be wild guesses, because not that many people can tell you for sure how many how many percent of, from the whole, from this circle, from this pie chart, is this customer actually taking? So another way of approaching this problem is this graphic. And this graphic is, kill me, I don't, rem I already don't remember what the divided bar graph. Remember it? No, I remembered it. Divided bar graph. And this divided bar graph shows the same in terms of information, however, it's more, it's, it's easier for those people that are not feeling comfortable and that are not having easy time grasping the information from the pie chart, actually understand how much of the work is customer A taking. So think about this, think about your audience, probably prepare both of those, the graphics for your audience because you, again, you as presenter, you wanna you want to make it easy for your audience to, to understand what you're talking about. The other very important graph that we are using, the other important chart, is actually the bar chart, right? That's more or less very important, very important graphic. And bar charts are absolutely great when we want to stress on something. Now, it's absolutely fantastic. It's really, really useful when you can, for example, mark or cower one of the bars in a different color and this way stress on it. This is where bar graphs, bar charts are really kicking in. These are where, where they're really, really good for. When you want to stress out on something, then 
you can easily use bar, chart, bar charts and it will make the audience feel really, they will understand very easily what you're talking about. And one last, the other important one that you may have probably seen is the line graph. And the line graph is the perfect way for you when you have to display a trend. When you have a trend, the line graph is like the best way possible or at least the best way I know to display this information. Again, if you, if you, look, at the, if you look at the slide, no legend, no other unneeded wines or cells or anything that's not needed in order for me to actually give away and share what I want to say on this slide. The slide means that since May, or let's say since April, our incidents are raising, are like just going through the roof. That's the idea behind the slide. That is what the slide is actually supporting. That's what, why I would use things like this. But again, there is nothing unneeded, there is nothing that is there just because it, for some reason, we think that it, it needs to be there or because someone told us, oh, you have to have this image out there, otherwise, uh, otherwise blah, 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 etc. I know very much of the conversations in the enterprise world and trust me, because I, I believe you saw my slide from HP, when I was working for HP, I had a serious let's call them like small conflicts on how to deliver some content because enterprises love text. That's the truth. That's, that's just so true. And I don't, I don't think that the most effective way of delivering a message is by just writing down every single thought that I have on the slide. And when you are in the, in the enterprise world, it's a bit more complicated and I quite understand that. But we as presenters, we as speakers, should stand behind our words and we have to, let's say, be extremely honest with the people who are our managers that this is the way how we are going to do it. And that's it. One of my favorite topics, covers. There is a whole science behind covers and you will see so many things about how colors, what colors mean because every single color has a meaning. There is a psychology why, for example, Facebook has a, has a blue logo or why Coca-Cola has a red logo and not green one. Because colors mean something. Now, our focus here, because we don't have the enough time, is our focus is how we, as technical people, because I'm also technical, I don't, I don't know that much about design, I actually sometimes don't like design that much because I don't understand sometimes and I'll claim that if I don't understand a design it's broken but because we are not we're, we're not graphical designers or web designers or people that are let's say have learned have learned something in the university that's related to colors how can we combine which is the best color that we can use and how can we combine colors in our presentations? Let me share with you four types. I believe that you know that color wheel. It turns out that there is a whole science behind this color wheel. There is a science in how are we actually going to combine colors and if we combine them in a specific way, they will look great when they are used together. The first way is the so-called monochromatic, which means that if you take a look at the color circle, you will see what range of colors we are taking. You can see that they are very, very close colors. Now, if I put that in an example, you can see that same bar, bar chart and you can see how I can use that combination of colors. And this way I can, let's say, I can enforce, I can share, I can stress on April that we had some, some minor issues there or that we need to talk about this month. This is how we can combine 
in, this is the first way how we can combine colors, in a monochromatic way, the colors that are very close to each other. Now, the second way of combining is, is so-called analogous. And the analogous is more or less like the previous one, however, it takes a wider range of colors, meaning it takes all of the, nuan of the nuances of the blue in this example. And if we apply that to our bar chart, you can see how this actually looks very, very, very well, right? It looks like those colors really go with each other. It's, it's okay. It's, it, seem, it seems like a consistent experience. Another way, more, let's, let's call it complicated way, is so-called complementary. So if we go back to the, to the color circle, we take colors that are on that color circle staying across each other. This is how we approach this. And if we put this into practice, here is how it looks like. So this is another way for us to approach color combinations. This is just one more way, and there are many, many ways. But you can again see that even if I am using blue, as in the previous examples, with some other nuances of the blue, it looks okay. But even now, if I use blue with orange, it also, it's also looking great. It's also looking like it looks okay. It doesn't look like if I place uh, let's say, blue with black or with some kind of silver, I don't know, probably it may not look, look that, that okay. And there is one more way of delivering and combining colors that I want to share, and it's my, definitely one of my favorite ones. It's called achromatic plus one, which means that we're taking only the, from white to gray and black plus one. What this means is that we are combining the colors in this way. We are combining the, the color variations of white, gray, and, and black, and we are stressing, we are using one color to stress out, to put a sign on something, to put an accent to something. This is just one other way for you to combine colors. And there are many, many other ways I will definitely recommend you, and I'll listen carefully. I want you to Google that immediately. Actually, not immediately, but after the presentation. I want you to Google the service, or Bing, the service, which is called Adobe. Adobe you know that company, Adobe, that's making Photoshop, etc. I want you to Google or Bing the service that's called Adobe Cooler. K-U-L-E-R. That's something that I want you to see because that website will blow your mind. That website will show you how you can combine colors in, in the best, that's the best website I, I know for this thing. That's just the best, the best thing that you can find on the web. It's free, so you can see hundreds, even thousands of color combinations that you can use to design your presentation, to design your blog, to design your website, to design your product if you want. Now, something else, room to breathe, the, princip the principle of room to breathe. What this means is that, I don't know if you, if you have seen it, but many presenters, many people, which are, let's say, not, let, they're just going into the presentations, they are like placing everything very close to each other, or they're placing some text or let's say, an image very close to the bottom of the, of the slide. And if you really take a look at it, it doesn't look very, very well. And that is what happens when people are, let's say, they, they really care about how they, they have to deliver their content. They are reading a lot on the web. They know that they have to put an image somewhere there, but because they have th these three bullet points already, if they have to place an image now, they don't have anywhere else but somewhere in the bottom right to place it, and the result is more or less every single time not satisfactory. Not sat I, I think it's just, it's just not the correct thing to do. What I mean by room to breathe is an example like this. This is, a, again, a presentation of mine. 
take a look at how, may, how much white space there is between every single object and between every single text field. Take a look at how the slide like breathes. Like it has some space where it can breathe from. This is what I want to stress out. Don't place, because you think you have to have image, don't place it on the cor in the corners or very close to the to some text field or some bullet point. No, it doesn't look well. It just it just doesn't. Always remember that there should be room to breathe if you want to remember it in this way. Room to breathe for every single thing that we are placing on the slide. La almost the last one. Something that I'm seeing even in the most advanced, the most well-known, the best speakers in the world. I also, Neil, told you we just got back from, from SQL Bits, which is a fantastic SQL conference. Even there, when you see the best minds in the world, even there when you see how they design their slide decks, they obviously haven't heard about this, this principle. Where is the center? Now, if I go on this slide, and if I want to center, put something in the center of the slide, and I say to PowerPoint, okay, align this text field in the center of the slide, and now align it on in the middle of the slide. These are the two options that I have that every single one of us actually uses to center, to, to put something in the center of the slide. However, if you take a look at it, yes, it is in the center. Mathematically, it is in the center. However, it, it doesn't look well. It looks a bit like it's in the, it, it, to me, it looks like this text is more or less in the bottom, in the, this part, the bottom part of the slide. Because if I just move, and I'll be careful what's going to happen, if I just move this text just a bit higher, now, I don't know how do you feel about it, but I feel like this is more like in the center. Again, take a look at where it mathematically says it is, and it's absolutely correct. However, if you place it just a bit higher, it looks quite better. It just looks quite better. Try that on your presentations. Once you put your whatever you want to put in the center of the slide, put it on slideshow, then go back to the old version, to the mathematically correct one, and you'll see that this version is the better one. This approach is the better approach. So the center is, yes, it is here mathematically, but for us as audience, for us as speakers, this is where we should place it because it looks more natural. So the center is here. And one last, because we are very close to the end, one last, which is more or less a generic one, but it's not something that we should skip. For by any means, design, guys, design is everywhere. I recently came back from London and I saw that building in person. Design is absolutely everywhere. Please start because you are a speaker, you want or you want to be, or you want to become a speaker. Please start to notice things. Please start to look around whenever you are outside. Look around for ideas. Look around about design concepts that you can apply. Take a look at how colors are combined. For example, take a look at the bridge on, that, on this photo. Take a look at the green color and the gold color, how they are combined. Can we use that in our slides? For sure, for sure we can. Take a look at the buildings. Take a look. Even when you are outside, even when you put your sneakers on your, on it and you went out and you go out to run, take a look at your sneakers, take a look at companies like Nike, take a look at companies like Adidas, take a look at what companies from the fashion industry are doing, take a look at how are they combining colors, even, even take a look at those shoes, see how the colors are combined, 
take the idea from here. Do not miss that. That's important. That's important. So start looking for ideas almost everywhere. Whenever you go in the world, take a look. Just, just notice things. Take ideas. Write them down if you want. But there is so much that we can take from the outside world. It somehow, it sometimes, it really, it really blows me away. Now, to summarize, to summarize what we have talked about. What are, what were those ten things that we discussed? The first thing: start analog. Please promise me, because you stayed with me here for one hour, and I really appreciate it, because I know that everyone is nowadays busy. Please promise me. Try for an let's say let's let's say it this way for an important presentation an Im presentation that you are going to deliver for a conference for your manager for your team when the presentation is important if you don't believe in this that much now when the presentation is really important do this go analog first don't go to your computer tablet or whatever you are using to design your presentation go on a white piece of paper first please take a look write your ideas see them in front of you rotate everything once you see everything you are very you will be in a very easy way it will be very easy for you to say okay that should be first that should be second once you then once you arrange everything once you arrange the ideas once you have a story then you start thinking okay how can i express this and then we start thinking about images, audio, video, what have you. And once I figure that out, I go to my computer and I pull it and I use my tool, be that PowerPoint, or Keynote, or Prezi, and I pull it and I deliver the presentation. Start analog, please. The second thing that's important, restraint. Remove the quarter. Remove everything that's not needed. You don't need unneeded things on your slide. Keep it as clean as possible as clean as possible the third principle the third thing simplicity keep it simple it's your job just you just have to keep it simple because this way you will deliver your presentation in even better way for your audience they will appreciate it images we talked a lot about images i will sh i will make sure you find those links and you have those links where you can find high quality images for free Chart and graphs, we talked about this, which chart, which graph we should use in specific scenarios. Fonts, again, be careful with fonts. Use just one font family on a, on a slide. Colors, how we can combine them. Is there a way for us to know how we can combine them? Obviously there is. The free space, the room to bring principle. Where is the center? The one that's always catches people at, at the beginning. Oh, they have always, whenever I have delivered a presentation like this, they're like, oh really? Oh yeah, it, it, it really looks, yeah, it really looks like this is the center now. So try that. And last but not at least, everywhere there is an inspiration, everywhere. So if you want to learn more, depending on how you learn best, if you want to learn more and if you want to read, then those two books are your books. They are written by a guy that's called Gar Reynolds. This guy is the guru of the presentations. From him you can learn a ton and in those two books you buy those books. Buy those books because in those two books you will see many, many ideas about presentation design. They will open your mind about what's possible and how you can probably rethink how you design your presentations. And also, if you like to watch videos, just again, I have recorded course for Pluralsight. If you are a Pluralsight subscriber, go ahead and watch it out. It's just one hour or something. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Neil, for hosting this one. I hope that it was useful. I hope that it opened your eyes for some new things that you can try in your next and upcoming presentations. And again, uh, thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate that you were here with me one hour and five minutes. Thank you, guys. So, Neil, back to you. Hi, Boris. Uh, thank you very <laughs> much. I have uh, passed a question over to you. And the question oh, okay. is, what is the best suggested software 
for recording their presentation. So what software for programs do you for, do for those uh, recordings? For recording a presentation? Yep. Okay, so, so in terms of how you can record the presentation, there is a sub-question that needs to be asked. First, are we, talking about, are we talking about the Mac OS or are we talking about Windows? Because in Mac OS, my personal opinion, what I'm a fan of, is called ScreenFlow. That's the software if you are a Mac user. Now, if you are a Windows user, there is, a, there is an add-in for the PowerPoint software, which is called, I'm not sure, but I believe it's called Office Mix. Google that one. Office Mix is a new add-in, which I saw the, for the first time at the MVP Summit. That plugin is quite great, quite, quite neat plugin to have. It, it, it's being added to PowerPoint. You can add it as you add, for example, a Power View in your Excel. And with it, you can easily, I mean really easily, record your, your screen. You don't record yourself. You only record your screen, though. Okay. Uh, there are, are, there are a number can... of, kind of software packages out there for that. So I think it's really kind of yeah. fine one that, that you feel comfortable working with. Absolutely, you very to kind of, uh, you know, give you the, the feedback that you need. So, you know, kind of try a few different ones and see which one works best. Yes, So that absolutely. was the uh, question we have. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, wrestle the, uh, the presentation uh, rights back from you now, um, just so I can kind of Perfect. finish off the session with a screenshot of the uh, chapter deck. Okay. So for, for our friends, uh, Thank you very much for joining us today. Just to kind of give you a final kind of um, end to the session now, what I'm going to do is bring up my screen and just going to do that now. And I'm showing hopefully my uh, screen at the moment. This is the community news for PASS. Um, and basically just kind of want to highlight that the on April the 20th to the 22nd, we have the Business Analytics Conference. If you are considering going and you've not already kind of signed up for that, we do have a discount code for this virtual chapter. So please use the BA, VC, PD for professional development and the virtual chapter and business analytics code. And that will give you $150 off the registration costs that currently are being run. If you're not aware, there's a whole host of other virtual chapters available from PASS. So please go to the PASS website and do subscribe to any other virtual chapters that are interest to you. We are giving a quick list in here of some other virtual chapter meetings that I'm aware of. There's more that have been listed, but I didn't have time to update the screen there. But you can see that there's kind of coverage of a few different virtual chapters there. And there's another one today, and there's also DA, DBA Fundamentals on the 17th. If you like going to impersonal events, then we do have some um, single Saturdays. Uh, there's six of them listed there in March, for, or sorry, March and April for North America, and a few international ones. I will be at the Exeter to one myself, and I'm also looking forward to doing the ones at Lisbon later in, uh, in May as well. And there's a kind of raft of single Saturdays around the world, so please do uh, make sure you go to a few of those as and when you can. And you can go to SQLSaturday.com to register for any of those events. If you are interested in becoming a volunteer with PASS, please do consider that it is an excellent way to further your career, give you insight and networking capabilities with your fellow SQL professionals. And you can go to the volunteer.sqlpass.org website that's been opened up. And please um, also update your My Volunteering section of your My PASS profile for HQ related activities as well. So if you're interested in kind of being involved in some of the year round uh, events that we do, we are looking for volunteers always on those. And again, remember to keep kind of connected, uh, get involved. PASS is a free membership and there's a lot of opportunities to learn from that. So lots of recorded sessions, not only from the virtual chapters, but also from PASS and other events that have, uh, PASS Summit and other events that have gone on, and you can see, see some of those recordings, and also follow us on Twitter, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. So 
A final thank you to Boris for his um, session today on presentation design. I think I now need to go and re-update all of my decks um, uh, before I can <laughs> present them again. Um, but you know, I will be making sure that I'm using the right type of images, right color coordination. I've got some you know white space in there, and all of the other <laughs> kind of interesting uh, kind of tidbits of you know information about style and. Look forward to seeing my presentations in a new stylized format very soon. So thank you very much to everyone, and I will speak to you guys at the next event. News on the next events that will be coming from the past chapter, uh, professional development, will be on the website very, very soon, and wait for the emails to come out from that. So I bid you farewell, and we will speak to you guys soon. Thank you. Okay.